It's that time again. Get inked. Get awesome. But whatever you got going aside, and guys will be. Welcome to FB Geeks. Here's the group Eric, Dan, and Steve. This is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 65 for Monday, March 25th, 2013. We are streaming to you live on Saturday, March 23rd. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks the world over, thank you for joining us today and welcome to another jocular episode of Fountain Pen Television. My name is Eric. My name is Stephen. My name is Aziza. And joining us this week, our good friend from the kingdom which is united, known to all as the One Man Pen Show, Mr. Sarge Minhas. Sarge, how are you, sir? I'm very well, Eric. How's, How's everything everybody out there? Every, everybody here, I think, is fine. How's everybody? Aziza, how are you? Stephen, how are you? I'm pretty awesome. I know, fine, wonderful. Thank you, Aziza Aziza is awesome. Yeah. Aziza is, I think she just upstaged all of us. She's awesome today. <laughs> okay, uh, Sarge, how's England today? It is uh, very, very, very snowy. It is, we have got some late snow, late um, winter snow. Did no one tell everybody that it's spring? Obviously not round here, but it's, uh, it's pretty bad. It's been pretty bad since yesterday, especially in my part of the country. Yeah, where exactly are you? I it, think I know, but I'm going to let you tell us. I'm in Birmingham, which is kind of central England, and it is probably about, uh, I don't know, it's about, they were saying about 20 centimeters. So what's that? About wow, 12 eight inches. inches? That's a lot. Eight, yeah, eight, eight, yeah, it's a lot. For so, for May March twenty third, that's a lot of snow. It is. It's some kind of record, I think. So. Oh, okay. Well, that's why you're on the show. You set the records. <laughs> it meant that I didn't have to do do my normal Saturday morning short chores because I can't get my car off the drive. Oh, so that's what an excuse! Off. See, I don't know from snow. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's let everybody know that Dan is not here today because you know he's at the hospital. He's picking up his wife and his newborn daughter, Aria. In case anybody, in case you didn't know it. Uh, the baby has been born. Shall I show the pictures now? I think I should show the pictures now, don't yes. you think? Yeah. Show us the pictures. Let me find the pictures of Aria, the cutest baby yeah. in the world. It's and a good way to start. Let's see. Yeah. Can everybody see Aria there? Yeah. How cute is she? What a face. What a cutie face. Yeah. What a cutie face. And I've got two more, so I'm going to continue that if I can find them. Aria Octavia. Here we go. Here we go. She. This is, as Stephen Brown put it, this is how she was delivered <laughs> in a little basket, uh, wearing. I think Sarge said wearing a hat like Dan. <laughs> yeah, for easy identification. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Matt. You order a baby. Here we go. It's your baby, and it's got a hat. So just saying, no, it's her. Sounds a familiar it's... voice there. And one more of the happy family. Aria with her eyes open this time. Uh, Mommy and Daddy. Oh, they're gorgeous. Gonna start a show. Gorgeous. I think we can just end the show now. Yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, bye. That was the highlight. And, uh... No, no, we have to go on. We have to, because we have uh, a new guest fee that I'm sure Sarge is aware of. It's a uh, <laughs> one obscure word is what we'll be looking for from you, Sarge. And just so you know, we're we're a clever bunch here, but we've never ever gotten an obscure word. <laughs> So, you have the floor, sir. Okay, so this week's obscure word is boustrophedon. And just to... Oh, he's going to spell it for know how it's spelled. There it is. Boustrophedon. So, See, no I would, cheating. I would guess boustrophedon. Fedon, uh, feedon. You call uh, it what you like. That's how uh, it's spelled. Does it have... Oh, gosh. Oh, I'll put it back uh, up. I think Stephen uh, and I probably know that word. So, Aziza, why don't you give it a try? Uh, I... I have a clue. I'm going to write it down. I'm not Googling it. Yeah, don't I'm going to write it. it down so I can observe the spelling. <laughs> it is. It has, does have uh, a... Oh, he's going to give us is, a clue. Yeah, clue is it is related to um, writing. All right. It's some chemical ingredient found in ink. No. Damn. Oh, did I say that on the air? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stephen, what's your humorous guess? Yes. The, the last bit... It's, like it's Greek, hormone, doesn't it? It's something. It's something Greek with a Greek root, and I've got the feeling it's got something to do. With seeing, seeing the last bit, something to do with with twisting or turning. Well, that's all I can make of it. I have. I have no idea. Unbelievable! Have you right? Okay, we'll leave it at that for the time being. That's very good, okay. Stephen. He, he got close, but he didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get well, it. Well, no, he, no. I, I love his etymological reasoning. That's very good. 
Oh yeah, even if he made it up, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's I like what you usually do. Is that he like... sold it to me. Sold doctorates, it to me. <laughs> doctorates can make it sound like that. Yeah. All right, so we will have the, the, the definition of the obscure word at the end of the show. In the meantime, I would like to announce that Aziza's special task today is to watch the chat room. Aziza, are you up to that? Hopefully. Are you in the chat room? I am in the chat room. Are you, are you, are you making friendly with everyone? I, I, guys, am I making friendly? I Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> guys, gals, geeks. As if you could be anything else but making friendly. Yeah, let's hope I can multitask. That's the thing. Well, you know, we'll see. that's why we assigned it to you because none of us can multitask. <laughs> See, oh, they're saying I'm friendly. Oh, oh, I have to prove it. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Give us all your pens. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, and I'm not sharing my peanuts. So you, you said know. peanuts, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And later on in the show, we will be playing the Geek Challenge slightly differently this time, but it's basically the same game. Uh, we will be looking for a caller win later on in the show. You hear this sound. <laughs> Stephen, it's not in your room. You don't have to look around. Uh, that'll be the, the, the cue to call, and you will call 415-685-GEEK, 415-685-GEEK. Why did I spell it? It's 4335. <laughs> As if they don't know how to spell geek, right? <laughs> Mr. Brown. Well, it could be with a Q. Or with an yes. A. G-E-A. How, how many? That's true. That's how oh, you spell yeah. it. Yeah. Mr. Brown, could you tell us about our month-long giveaway? Uh, I think I can, yes. Right. The March month-long giveaway uh, gives you the opportunity to win a very, very nice pen, which is the Pelican M800 in a tortoiseshell brown finish. That pen extremely, comes in a tortoise brown? extremely, insanely, ridiculously popular. I didn't know Sorry? that. It came in a tortoise brown. Uh, well, I've, I, I just found out myself. So apparently this is hot of the truck. Uh, that is hot of the truck. Unlike the pen, which has been around for a bit. Um, but it's, uh, you can get it. And it has been very, very graciously donated by Dennis van der Graaf at La Couronne du Comte. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful pair. Now, what you have to do to get it is uh, send us a picture of you with a turtle on your head. No, wait. No, 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 that's not it. Although that was the second best idea. Now, what you have to do is very simple. You go to La Couronne du Comte. You will find the, the, the uh, URL. You a website. The, you don't actually have website. to go to the shop. Yes, okay. no. You'll find it on the website, <laughs> lacouroneducomte.nl, um, and you... you uh, Fool around on the side a bit until you, you find the M800 in tortoise shell, and then you will find a specific sentence. And that sentence has a little blank at the end, a, a trailing a bunch of, of little underscores, and you have to finish that sentence, and you have to send us, on a piece of paper, put in an envelope with the correct address on it, your finishing, your, your, your final thing, the way you have finished that sentence. And the best part is, there is no correct answer. So you can write down anything you like, as long as it's clean. And then you send it to us, and we will read it, and we will pick a winner. Based on the answer? Um, based on random terrianism. Okay, so it's a random drawing. Is there still time? When, when do these have to be re re received? Yes, why don't you tell me? I, I suppose the end of the month, the but the what, month, what exactly yeah. the, do we the consider the end of the, the, end of the month? Uh, the last the day deadline. that mail is delivered on this month. And it's... There's actually, Aziza, isn't there a post about this at fpgeeks.com? See, I'm pulling you out of there, the chat. Thank you. There is indeed. There is indeed. And all the details <laughs> are on that post? Yes. All yes. right. All right. So it is the Which is fortunate because everything I said didn't make any sense. So I don't know that anybody was even it. paying attention to you. <laughs> it's the Pelican <laughs> M800 Tortoise Shell Brown um, uh, for this month. Next month, I don't know how we're going to follow that up. How do, how do you follow? I know. We'll just pick one of Sarge's pens, right? <laughs> Sarge is going to donate. Send off. Actually, we'll just say the winner will pick any one of Sarge's pens. How's that? And it'll be so hand about, delivered. How, I think we can do this better. The, the, the winner of next month wins Sarge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to have a chat afterwards, guys. <laughs> oh, exactly. We'll wait till we're off the air, and you can let us know what you think. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what I find amazing this week is that we're not calling one of the Andersons for an update from a pen show. We've Crazy. done that for the three three last consecutive FPTV programs, and this week apparently there's no pen show. So Maybe the you Andersons can just call them and, and ask how they're doing. I just call and say, "Hey, how is it being at home?" <laughs> Stephen, what's the next pen show? 
The next pen show, um, I think, would be the Atlanta pen show. Uh, All which right. is what is that? That is in April on in on during April, uh, April thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. Do you have any That's information about it? Uh, yes, Friday the thirteenth, which is a very bad omen. I, mean, I don't know why anyone would want to go to a pen show on Friday the thirteenth. You can be absolutely certain that you will yeah, not find Friday, it. Friday, Friday, is, Friday is the twelfth, I'm sure. Oh, is it the twelfth? Yeah. Is it so, a mistake? <laughs> mistake in the show notes. Who compiled the show notes? He's fired. Okay, so now sure Friday. Friday is in fact the twelfth. Yes, so we'll just say Friday. <laughs> okay, that, well, that's a huge relief. Then it's not the 13th. So you will find the pens you're looking for. You can do so from noon till 5 p.m. And then there's Saturday, which is then the 13th. But that's not as bad because it's not Friday. And Friday the 13th is the bad day. Uh, you can get in from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then you have Sunday the 14th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. There's a daily admission, which is $7. And there is also a weekend pass, which is $25. Any seven hours going on? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we have a seminar with Susan Worth on Saturday at 11 a.m., and if that's not enough, there is a Pendleton Brown seminar on Sunday the, uh, at, at 11 in the morning. Fantastic. The Atlanta Pen Show. I'm sure the Andersons will be there, because they go to every U.S. Pen Show. I'm positive that uh, Ryan Krusak Studios will be there, since... He's in Georgia. I don't know if Sarge will be there. In fact, I don't think Sarge will be there because I think he's going to be in Poland, isn't he? I am indeed. We're going to the inaugural Poland pen show. There's a, the, a Poland pen show in, oh, oh, none of us really know how to pronounce the name of the city, uh, Katowice? Katowice, Katowice, that's the way I pronounced it. Katowice, and Poland it, on April 14th and 15th. No, no it's 13th it's, and 14th. Say that again? 13th and 14th, the 13th Saturday and, and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, which uh, coincidentally is the same weekend as the Atlanta Pen Show. Uh, you know, Sarge, maybe I can call you that day. <laughs> yeah. If, I'll, if I'll, call they the have... Andersons. I'll, I'll call the Andersons to get an update on the Atlanta Pen Show, and then we'll call you to get an update on the Poland Pen Show. Yeah, the timing should be about right, because it'll be about um, 4 p.m. or something like that, I think. Yeah, that'd be fun. Mm. That'd be fun. Yeah, give us a call. I'm very excited because it's uh, first time I've, you know, it's a first time show for anybody really. But uh, and they are a very enthusiastic bunch, the Polish uh, Pen Club. Fantastic. They came to the London show a couple of years ago. Uh, spent a lot of time with us, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. So, well, I wish we could all go, but you'll just have to go in our stead and report back. I will. And then you're going to the Northern Pen Show, which is going to be, uh, if the dates here are correct, Sunday, April 21st. Correct. That is correct. The following <laughs> weekend, yeah. The following weekend. So you have one one show in Poland, and the next weekend, uh, the Northern Pen Show, which, uh, where is it held? Because I have that, West Beach, Lytham, but I don't know. Is that, it's which Lytham, is, Lytham, Lytham, Lytham and St. Anne's. So golf fans, there may be some golf fans, will know that that's where the, uh, one of the venues for the um, uh, the British Open Golf Championship, Lytham and ah, St. Anne's. Okay. So Lytham right. is the name of the city. There are two cities, yeah, Lytham and St. Anne's. They're right next to each other. They're not cities. They're kind of small towns. Small right town. on the coast. It's a beautiful venue. That's and, Sunday, uh, April 21st yeah. from 10 to 4. Admission is five pounds at the door. And Aziza, that's pounds as in British sterling. <laughs> I prefer the other kind. Yeah. Get rid of those. It's a good show. It's a good show. All right, Sarge, what's your next pen show in the United States? Chicago. Chicago, which is May. In fact, May the second should be the first weekend in May. Yeah, yeah. So May the second. So we're flying out on May the first. Uh, confirming my flights this weekend. So fly out on the first and leave on the, the Monday the sixth or something. So um, Chicago is a good show as well. Well, you were there last year, Eric. Yes, it's a fun show. Yeah, it is. Well, any show with you is is a fun show. <laughs> you are worth the price of admission. Absolutely. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> It's the truth, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it, 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 we won't even talk about how much money I give you at pen shows. Let's move on, <laughs> shall we? Well, let's move on to our previous poll question, which two weeks ago we had pen rationing. Last week we did ink rationing. There were, you were going to have to live with one ink for the rest of your days, and there were 12 different inks from which to choose. With 12 different inks from which to choose, I was surprised that any one of them got above 12%. But Waterman, Florida Blue got 24% of the votes. So nearly 25% of people would 
very happily, I don't know if they'd be happy about it, but could live with just that one ink. The, the number two most popular was Aurora Black. And I have a bottle of Aurora Black. It's a nice silky black. I like it a lot. I don't think I would want to live with it for the rest of my days. Aziza, which ink did you choose? I picked Yamabudo. You're, you see, Hiroshizuku Yamabudo got 11%, came in fourth place, and I was surprised that it did because it's sort of, uh, how would you describe the color, Aziza? Like wine grape color. Wine grape color, yes. It's, yeah. it's an interesting color to live with for the rest of your days. Because it's Doc, not purple. Doc Brown, which, which ink did you choose? I chose mm. Waterman Florida Blue. You did? Yes. Good. I'm glad you're one of the, the majority. Yes. I, I, why, I chose why did you not choose so, Waterman yeah. Blue? Uh, well, it's not it's it's not because of the, um, the 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 amazing color because clearly it's 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 a blue and and you know you you you're getting a blue ink without excessive shading or anything, but it is so well behaved and it's so really nice in not bleeding through your pages and doing all that stuff. For me, that that was a big factor in, in choosing an ink. I mean, there are other inks that I that were on the list that are much more flashy and colorful that I would prefer for the colors, but then their behavior isn't always so good. Uh huh. So you chose it mostly for the behavior. I yes. chose. Thank you for asking. I chose the Mont Blanc Jonathan Swift. Yeah, I should have. Because it is my current, my current favorite. You know that that's subject to change without notice. Um, Sarge, I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Even well, you... I I chose Waterman Florida Blue. Oh, oh right. Good choice. The... Purely because exactly what Stephen just said. Not so much for the color. I think I prefer um, some other blues to that. But it is works best in. The most number of pens, really. Yeah. So, I mean, there was no restriction on number of pens for the rest of your life. It was only on ink. Yes, this is on, on that the basis. Way. And on that basis, I went for the one that I have used for many, many years, and literally is the one ink I generally test to te use to test any pens that I've bought. It's one of the first things that you know that, and probably Waterman uh, Blue Black as well. Sometimes they both so, uh, behave very well. Yeah. Aziza, you and I are the rebels here. Well, I need to get all these inks because I don't have them all. You so don't I need have to get some of these all. inks? I thought you had yeah. every ink on the planet. No, just just most. Just most? Just most. So just I need most. to get all of them to properly test this because it's just not fair to me. Have you never used Flor uh, Florida Blue, Waterman's Florida Blue? I've used Florida Blue, okay. but I haven't used Aurora Black, which is obviously very popular, so I have to get that. Have you used Mont Blanc, uh, Jonathan Swift, the seaweed I green? Oh, you no. have. Yeah, oh, so you I, see, this is just not fair. No. Uh, how could you possibly answer this poll question if you haven't used every single one of those inks? Right. Crazy. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> that was not a prerequisite. <laughs> <laughs> there is a new poll question, and it has to do with the Edison Pen Company's uh, current uh, 20, uh, 2013 limited edition Morgan Group buy. The, the buying window is on now. It will end on April 7th, and so the poll just asks how many of the pens are they going to sell. And you can take your pick. There are six chunks of numbers to choose from. I've already answered. Please visit fpgeeks.com. The poll is on the right side, and, and take your best guess. I, I'm saying six billion, approximately. Well, that would be 251 or more. So okay, you have well, a category good. from which you can choose. Uh oh. That sound, of course, means that we're looking for a call. It's not under your chair, Stephen. Oh, fortunately. We're looking for a caller a for the geek of, uh, geek of the Week. Did you hear me say that? This is the Geek Challenge. Um, if anyone would like to play the Geek Challenge, you can call now 415. I, I guess if they win, they are the Geek of the Week. 4335. Sorry, no, actually, Sarge is the Geek of the Week. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we're going to transition this okay. special guesting into the Geek of the Week, don't you think? Don't you think? Yes. Yeah, yes, I think so. Uh, someone is calling. Shall I answer it? I no. suppose. Fountain Pen Television, this is Eric. May I help you? Hello? Hello Eric? Yes. yes. <laughs> can you... This is Brenda. Brenda, it's very nice to, to speak with you. I, I can hear myself. Can you turn the volume down on your computer? Hello. Hello, Brenda. Where are you calling from? I'm going to call her back because we just got cut off. Oh, oh no. Hopefully you can all hear it ringing. 
Yes. And we'll just have dead air while we do this. We'll listen to the ringing. But maybe we have to pay these actors Hello? more so that Brenda? they don't hang up. Yes, sorry. It's all right. I don't know what happened. We got cut off, but uh, I just hit redial and, or call back or whatever it was, and it, it rang. And how are you? Where are you calling from? Hi, good. Um, Pacific Northwest. The US. Pacific Northwest. So are we saying Oregon or Washington? Washington. Washington. Are you ready to play the Geek Challenge? Yes. Okay. This is how it's going to work this week. I have five statements, true or false statements, this week. For each of them, I, I will state them. They'll be true or false. The panel in front of me, Aziza, Sarge, and Stephen, will hold up either true or false. They will be right or wrong. They don't know these questions in advance. And you can use the panel as a guideline if you wish, or you can ignore them completely. The deal is that for each question that you get correct, you'll get one Fountain Pen Geek postcard. And this week, I don't get to help. So you can, okay. you can get from zero to five. Uh, but I don't get to help. So if we're ready, panel, are you ready? Ready. All right. In honor we'll of Sarge, in <laughs> honor of Sarge, the questions have to do with England, uh, <sighs> and they're not really questions; they're statements. I'm going to keep calling them questions, even though this is it. Ready? Okay. True or false? Conway Stewart fountain pens are the only fountain pens currently manufactured in England. Conway Stewart. Uh, let me see. Everyone on the panel says false. Aziza says false. Sarge says false. Aziza, Doc Brown. Dear, dear my girl Aziza, back me up. I'm going to say false. False is correct. And uh, I mean, I can think of Onoto, Jack Row, Twist Pens. There are probably many others. Worcester, Worcester Pens. See, Sarge is going to come up with it. All right. So we've got one postcard. Shall we continue? Okay. Or do you want, yeah, we yeah. should do it. You can have one and go home, or you can try for two and go away. No, nothing. No. You've got one. Let's, go away. Keep Let's keep going. Okay, true or false? The postage stamp was invented and first used in England. True or false? The postage stamp invented, first used in England. I'm just going to go with them because I have no idea. Okay, Sarge and Stephen both said true, and Aziza said true based on social proof. She looked at their answers first. So everybody says true. Um, yeah. Peer pressure. According to my research, it is absolutely true. The postage stamp uh, awesome. was first used, was invented and first used in England. And up until recently, and I don't know if that's changed, the England didn't have their name on their postage stamps because still, still don't. Still Just don't. The Queen's head. They, they don't need to because they invented it. So and they have the Queen's, it. the Queen's head as well. That's the one. That's <laughs> All right, we're up to two postcards. Let's try for a third, shall we, Brenda? Okay. True, or, true or false? In the year 1957, 1957, 80,112 80, fountain pens were reported lost on the tube, which is London's metro system. 1957, 80,112 fountain pens. True or false? I have no answers yet. Stephen oh, wow. says true. Sarge says false. So Aziza doesn't get social. Wait, I, I'm looking to the chat room as a lifeline here. Come on, chat room, help me out. No, see, the chat room could use Google. We can't do that now. Oh, okay. okay. What, what does okay. Aziza actually think? Okay, 8, let's. 8,112,000 8, pens. Yeah, that's like 200 a day, something like that. I don't know. I'm going to go with false because it sounds like a lot. All right. Aziza says false. Sarge says false. Stephen says true. What does Brenda say? Oh, Thanks, sorry, Aziza. I'm going to have to go with true. Okay. That is completely false. I made it up. <laughs> 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 However, it was based on the fact that every year approximately 80,000 umbrellas are lost on the tube. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, so we're still at two postcards. Let's try for a third with statement number four, true or false. The United Kingdom has the highest percentage of left-handed individuals on the planet. There are more left-handed people in the UK than anywhere all else on the planet. Why is it always me left deciding? You're not fast. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. More left-handed individuals. Left-handed people. Left-handed people. Stephen says true, Sarge says false, and Aziza refuses to play. No, no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking hard. I'm like, how many people do I know in the UK? Oh, she's actually studying this. Yeah, I'm studying this. 
I'm going to um, go with false. I think I'm going to go with false. Brenda says false, and Brenda is correct. I completely made that up. <laughs> All right, so I think if my, if my counting is correct, Brenda, you are up to three, three, correct? Three postcards, and we're trying for a fourth one now with this statement. Which one do I want? This is a good one. If you are in England, if you're standing somewhere in England, no matter where you are, you cannot be more than 75 miles from the sea. He did this on purpose because he knows I'm bad at geography. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm gonna go with this because I I'm bad. All right. <laughs> I'm bad at geography. <laughs> Aziza says true. Uh, Sarge put up true, but then changed it to false. And then Stephen says true. If you are in England, you cannot be more than seventy-five miles from the sea. But I have no. Um. Okay. True. That is true. Actually, wow. it's 74 and a half miles. No place in England is more than 74 and a half miles from the sea. Brenda, congratulations. You have won four postcards. Would you like to try for a fifth? I have another question. That's rock and roll. All right. All right. Here we go. The extra credit question. True or false, Japan is approximately one-third the size of England. Yes, another geography question. I'm sorry, Aziz. I didn't think of you when I was doing this. Sure, Japan. I, 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 but I don't believe it. So I, I couldn't hear the question. Could you repeat it? Japan. Some, kind of... For for Doc Brown, while he's looking yes. this up on Google, Japan is approximately one third <laughs> the size of England. <laughs> Aziza says false, and uh, Stephen says false, and Sarge says false, and he's pointing to it as if he's emphatically saying false. Brenda. Yes, I'm going to go with false. False. It is completely false. And the truth of the matter is that England is approximately two-thirds the size of Japan. Brenda, congratulations. You have won five fountain pen friendly FP Geeks postcards. If you will send me an email later today with your mailing address and the phone number from which you called so that I know it's you, I will get those out in the mail to you post haste. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for calling, Brenda. And thank you for playing. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 That was awesome. That was fun. I, feel, I, I was so actually confident. I was surprised uh, to learn that Japan, the island nation of Japan, is larger than the island nation of England. They have two islands as well. So, so. even if you include both islands for both nations, Japan is going to be larger. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was the case. We're only a little nation here. We're very small. Yes, but how could people lose eighty thousand umbrellas a year? <laughs> I mean, I had to do the math. It was like 229 a day. <laughs> a, lot a lot of people. people. Yeah, oh, it wasn't like 57. No, this is current. I made up 57 to make oh, it I see, right. sound like fountain pens could actually be plausible. Hmm. I think we should talk about Sarge. Sarge, let's make you Geek of the Week, shall we? <laughs> shall we make you Geek of the Week? Put you yeah, in of the, course. The, the spotlight and see... Go for it, go for it. All right, then I'm going to ask my famous question. Who is Sarge Minhas? I am. Uh, <laughs> I am a fan. I warned you in advance. I was, yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> so I'm. Uh, I I live in the UK. I am a. Uh, I am a child of the '60s, and I enjoy fountain pens. And I have a uh, three child, three children. I have to think then twice. <laughs> <laughs> Twin girls who are 21, and my son is 17, coming up to 18. Um, so we've been in the UK for, as I said, most of my life. I was born in India. And um, here I am. Here you are, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. Uh, we know you love fountain pens. We know you go to pen shows. We know you sell pens. But do you have a day job? Yes, I, uh, I work for IBM, and I have worked there for nearly 15 years now. I am, for most of my kind of career I've been a project manager in IT um, so I've, I've done that for IBM but now I'm kind of working more on the sales and solutioning side but still and in for global business services so it's all to do with business and business applications business services that IBM offer it's a uh -huh. it's an interesting job yeah so w when we have a computer problem we call you no no <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay please don't call me I, I, 
I'm not that technical. <laughs> I am. I am a you know manager. Really, <laughs> we don't know oh, anything. <laughs> so your IT field is your day job, uh, and yeah. are we calling fountain pens a hobby, or are you? Abs well, absolutely. But I think it's something that has become a bit more than a hobby. Um, but it is, you know, I, my job is still full time and takes priority over the pens, without a doubt. But you know, as I enter into my fifties, I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing um, in the autumn of my life, if you like, when the kids have have gone and done, doing their own thing. So I, that's one of the things I wanted to try and maybe think about building up something um, in terms of a business. Uh, so right now uh, we're enjoying going to these pen shows, which is we all do in, in our vacation, you know, in our kind of normal vacation time. Um, but then maybe in a few years' time, you know, the plan is to cut down a bit more on the, um, on the IBM side and the IT side. I can still carry on doing that as a consultant and then do a bit more build up something in fan pencil, which I've built up you know, a lot of knowledge, a lot of contacts, and a lot of inventory, as you may have seen. <laughs> as, I, as I may have seen, yes, as I yeah. may have seen. So how long have you been like using and loving fountain pens? How long have you been a fountain pen geek? All my life, I think, Eric, All ever since okay. school. Really, I've always loved, loved using them, and even when I was at you know, sort of primary school here, and we, I always you know, would ask for a a new fountain pen every birthday uh, using the old kind of school tool pens platinum and the cheaper parkers etc Schaefer's of the do time you, but do you happen to remember your first fountain pen uh, would have been a platinum uh, not the platinum in terms of the Japanese platinum it is spelt platignum p l a t i g n u m platignum platinum I don't I'm pretty sure the brand is no longer Manufactured, but it was the most popular school sort of uh, student pen brand. Do you remember what kind of nib it had? Uh, medium, generally. Medium nib. We didn't get into fancy. So you don't we just still have that. Pen. They were cartridge pens and, okay. and they had medium nib steel, but I loved them. I loved getting. I mean, you know, my first good pen was another Parker, and that, I mean, I I loved it. It was a classic, very skinny. Parker Classic model. When did you get uh, your first good pen, as you say? Probably uh, early 70s, maybe, when I was about 12, 13, maybe okay. something like that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite fountain pen? I knew you were going to ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have several, but I mean, it's difficult to choose. I mean, I, I think probably my favorite brand certainly is Schaefer. Right, um, well, that's kind yeah, of a focus. So, I'll ask you yeah. about a focus in a minute. Yeah, but so of all so pens currently in your collection, you can keep only one. What is it going to be? It would be my Schaefer Sterling Legacy. The Legacy, the one that we yeah. saw in your daily carry? Yeah, the, so the, one, the daily carry here. That's so it would never be more than one meter away from you? Never. It's always in my, in my laptop case or on my desk. And I, I love this pen. I love the profile. It's, it's luxurious. Pen. It writes. I can... The nibs are available for about a hundred dollars if you look around. So I can have five or six different nibs, and I can use cartridges. I can have a touchdown fitting system, or I can, or I can um, use converters. It's just just a great pen, great model. Oh, okay, so we know what your favorite pen is. Now, what about a favorite yeah. ink? Oh, well, I guess we already know your favorite ink too, don't we? No, no, the favorite ink is not. No, 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 oh, okay. no, no. That was not the question. All right. What is your favorite that ink? Was not, my favorite ink is Parker Penman Sapphire. Parker Penman Sapphire? Which is no longer available. I was going to say, have, where do you get that? But I have a huge stash. You well, have a huge stash. Does I have Lisa about a dozen Anderson, bottles. Does Lisa Anderson know about your huge stash? She may do, but she's not getting her hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> so she... <laughs> it's it's my, well, by far my favorite ink, uh, color-wise, but it's not very friend, fountain pen friendly in terms of... It's very super saturated, and you need to be high maintenance on it. But I love the color. I dilute it slightly sometimes, and it just writes like a dream. All right. So we know your favorite pen. We know your favorite ink. What about a favorite paper? Paper is Rhodia. I think it's probably my my favorite. So I, I mean, I have several pads. I use this these pads. I use the most. Right. Those um, are those kind of pads I just keep around if I have to write something down. That's my everyday yeah. paper. Yeah, and I think it's great because. You know, it's it's good quality. It doesn't bleed through. The ink sits on there nicely. It's not silky smooth like. I mean, I don't 
I'm not a massive fan of the Rodeo web books because I think they're too smooth. Well, they use. Uh, a, I'm yeah. sure they're using a Clairefontaine yeah. paper that's a bit yeah. smoother. And oh, sometimes, I I, sometimes, I, sometimes I like smooth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it depends on the pen, obviously. And that's right. A, yeah. And I also use um, three candlesticks, uh, heavy laid paper for when I've got some of my vintage pens, which I want to kind of flex around. And... Aziza, do we know anything about three candlesticks? No, paper? I'm I'm writing it down right now. I think we Is need it, to get a sample I think of it's, three candlesticks it's, paper. Yeah. I can send you some. Yeah. This is, you, you, that's why I mentioned it, as he said. Yeah, because I knew he was going to do that. <laughs> you did send me the Tomoe River. That's true. Yeah, I will send you. I will send you the. It's. Uh, I think it's made by Basildon Bond. I'm not sure, but it's uh, generally available. Okay. But it's a. Uh, it's a heavy laid paper. It's not. It's. Um, you. It's. It's not one which you would like. Say oh, it's really smooth. It's really. You need a, either a flex nib or a, or a heavy writing stub or something with, and it will just. It's gorgeous then. Okay, three candlesticks. Yeah. It's on yeah. our list. So, yeah. you loved pens from the very beginning, fountain yes. pens in particular, and at some point you said, why don't I try selling some of these? How did that happen? I think, it, yeah, so the evolution really was, yes, I loved using them, and then as, you know, as I had more disposable income, I started to buy stuff for myself rather than wait for gifts and stuff when you're at school. Um, oh, gee, I should consider that. Buying yeah, for myself. Yeah, mm. exactly. <laughs> and all the way through university and stuff, I started to buy pens. And and then when I think it probably uh, I found myself kind of, I probably was a collector, mostly kind of modern pens at that time, Parkers and Schaefer's. I also, um, at that stage, I think, once the internet came along around you know, early mid nineties when I got on, I was on CompuServe and some of the first fountain pen forums and stuff as well. And that's when I started to realize that there were other people like other me fountain pen there. geeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, and that's, I think at that stage, it also coincided with the fact that I had a bit more money and the internet was a great shopping <laughs> avenue where Still I could buy is. stuff from, uh, from you know all over the world and that's when i really i think probably late 90s and the early 2000s is when i really started to buy and build my collection and bought a lot of crap as well really a lot of, a lot of <laughs> well yeah, yeah you do. i think you we to, all start by accumulating so we yeah exactly we, so we have to get our hands on them so we know what they are and whether or not we like them yeah so i did that and i've decided to uh, but i didn't really have a focus i just kind of bought what i liked i mean, I, Lots of, and then I got into vintage and started to think about, you know, condition and and you know, putting some order in my collection. And then, to do that, I found that I was running out of money. Um, and, you know, my wife said to me, "Listen, you know, happy for you to have this hobby, but priorities are, you know, the kids and everything else. So therefore, I started. I thought the only way I'm going to fund buying new pens is to sell some of the pens I have. And that's guess that's where I started selling and initially started selling just on the fountain pen forums, places like uh, Pentrace and fountain pen network. I've never sold on eBay um, yet. And then <laughs> you're keeping that as an option. <laughs> well, right? yeah, it's just one of those things. I just, you know, I prefer to sell face to face or person. If, if a collector comes to me like in, on one of the boards and try and sell that way rather than try and do something anonymous, um, but obviously that, you know, is, is something I may have to move towards if I set up a website or something later. Um, but then we started to go to pen shows. First pen show, always attended shows. I did the London show for as long as I can remember. since 1999, 98, I think. Um, but then I started to go, when uh, there started to be more than one show, the Northern Pen Show was the first pen show I had a table at. Oh, so the first pen show that you were a vendor at was the Northern Pen Show. Northern Pen Show in two thousand and six, I think. So two thousand and six. So not that long ago. And then since then, then we went to the first U.S. Pen Show was the following year, Los Angeles, two thousand and seven. All right. I've been there every year since. Um, and then it, then we started to really kind of we just started to <laughs> get. It's we so I enjoyed long, it. Huh? You yeah. enjoyed it, and yeah, obviously you make enough. There has to be enough money. Yeah, to I think that there is no way. there is no profit as such uh, out of the U.S. shows. It's really we cover our costs, but we enjoy right. it. Yeah, but we do make um, profit in the European shows. I mean, you know, because there's no overheads as such. Drive there, try and sell what I can. 
All right. At any given moment now, how many, approximately, how many pens do you have for sale? In my inventory, probably good pens, maybe 500, five or 600. What do you mean good pens? You mean good... In, quality, you know, quality fountain pens. Um, you have not, some sub subpar pens? I've got... I've got I've so, never you know, seen any subpar pens. No, I know you wouldn't see them on my table. It shows, but I have accumulated over the years, and I caught. I guess they're kind of parts pens now, and, and oh, okay, cheapos and so. I yeah, uh, I was. I was going to yeah, say I yeah, probably yeah. would guess if I looked at your tables, and I've seen your yeah. table many times. I'd say, oh, he's got five hundred pens, easy. Yeah, which shows we normally take about four hundred, I think, because it's just the, the, the limitations of of cabin luggage and all the rest of it. So five hundred now. So if if I don't find you at a pen show, how can I? How do I know what you've got for sale? You just have to email me and ask me. Or you can phone me and ask me. Oh, what's your email address? My email address is sarge.minhas at gmail.com. Very That's easy. Very easy. Yeah. So people can just email you and say, hey, do you have this pen? Yeah. Or, no, I mean, uh, what, what you, I, I mean I, sometimes if I'm very busy at work, I may not respond immediately. But I will definitely try and, if I've got it, obviously I'll tell them I've got it and here's the price. If I haven't, then I will maybe point them in the right direction. I've done that. Got now, are we talking strictly vintage or strictly modern? No, no. Or everything? Full range. I, that is, I, you know, that's the full range. I enjoy vintage and modern. So, and I have good, good selection of both. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm about to make a statement about you and you tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I buy from you not because I know I'm going to get the absolute rock bottom price, but because I know I'm going to get a really good pen. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I when I'm looking for like a 146 and I want it to be a very nice 146 at a decent price from a friend of mine, I go to Sarge. That would be good, and I think a lot of my customers that's the way it is at the moment, and uh, I'll get a lot of repeat customers. So I must be doing something right. Well, that's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. I say I don't. I don't even want to imagine how many. Uh, I'm just gonna. The amount of money I've given you, I'm gonna convert it to pounds, so the number is a bit less. <laughs> it hurts you, doesn't it, Harry? It hurts. You. <laughs> no, no. I just look at the pens. If it ever hurts me, I just look at the pens because that's the way to do it. That's absolutely do it. worth every penny I've ever given you. Because <laughs> not only do I know I'm getting a good pen that is actually working, but if there's a problem, I can say, "Hey, Sarge." Yeah. Not that I've ever had a problem, but I know that I could with you. And see, I don't. I'm not a huge eBay buyer. Because yeah. I want to see the pen ahead of time, and I really want to know who I'm buying it from. And so, Sarge is my eBay. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Sarge is my eBay. He's, he's always got a buy it now button with my name on it, unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, aside from the pens that you have for sale, how many pens are in your personal collection? And be oh, honest, you're among probably, friends. We won't judge you, I promise. Not huge, not huge. Probably about 200, something like that. <laughs> Okay. But that is that is 200, 200 to the power of what exactly? Maybe? No, no, no. That, I, I, I have did one of the things I have learned over the last few years is to focus, and I have. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know I make a conscious decision whether something's going to go into my collection or into my inventory. Do you have any I tips? Did it between both for a bit, but then. Generally. Do you have any tips on how to get to that? Because uh, many of us struggle with that. We we accumulate more than collect. And we, we wind up with a lot of pens that sit on our... I'm speaking specifically for Stephen Brown at the moment. Thank you very yes, much. Thank you. <laughs> but how think, do you move from accumulation to putting a direction to a collection? I think that is a, it's a big step, but I think you have to make some, some decisions whereby you have to limit, you have to you know, clearly define where your limit and your focus is. So I made a decision that I'm going to collect Schaefer pens from a certain era. And I and not necessarily completist in that era. In other words, I don't want every color of every size, or, but that would be my focus area. And then and and try and build up something that was. Um, one of the things with vintage pens is I think uh, you can get a lot of pens that write nicely. You can get them to write nice. They have great nibs and. But I think if you're really going to be serious about it, and when I say serious, I mean something that you want to leave as a legacy or something as an inheritance and you're going to you want to it's not i'm not going to use the word investment because i don't think there's there's pens aren't a good investment in terms of returns you may get a few that may go up in value but generally it's all about condition and it's the same in any antiques you, you have to buy stuff that is in the best condition and i think there's one lesson i've learned and draw fools of not so good pens a testament to that <laughs> is that if I if I'm going to buy and that's why I don't buy so much from eBay anymore, 
is I go to pen shows and I buy pens which I can have a look at and see and understand and exactly what the condition is and then that's in the vintage side anyway and that's why the way I so my advice would be decide what you like and um, set yourself a focus uh, there's lots of good books out there now in terms of so there's a lot of order to our hobby I think you can go and get a clear view of you know the models that are available if you're looking at vintage modern I think is generally you know you can look in fat and pen hospital catalogs and stylus annuals and stuff to get a full view of what the range is and then go ahead and and focus and that's you're, you're saying you're saying you have to make a conscious decision about I absolutely otherwise you will continue accumulating you see, I've, I've made conscious decisions about that on, on many occasions, but then something shiny catches my eye. <laughs> but then you have to start well, buying tables at pen shows and selling them once you return. Once you, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what happened to me. So I can still enjoy pens that are outside of my focus. But then I'll, I'll be my, across the aisle from you with my 25 <laughs> pens. <laughs> and there are a number of people that have, Eric, you'd be surprised. People started with me exactly that way. And they've now got tables like I have. Oh, don't even! Oh, no, 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 no! Yeah, it will come. <laughs> it will come. I think we should just take Stephen Brown's collection to a pen show. Yeah. See. Well, I mean, that, I mean, you were talking about it's, it's. It's very simple. I've made a conscious decision Here to purchase go. every pen I've got. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't difficult at all. It's just that you want this. Yes. Okay. Boom. Well, that's you know. I think that's okay too. If if you realize that you're more or less accumulating pens. Yeah and you make a conscious decision to continue doing so, then that's fine. It's when, like Sarge says, he's got a drawer full of, I don't even remember exact words. <laughs> not, <laughs> not the so best nice pens. pens. Not so nice yeah. pens. I could open yeah. my drawer right now, and unfortunately, I don't remember how I got some of these pens, and I think yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. When you don't remember where they came from or how they got into your drawer, and what are they doing here in the first place? And Yeah, that's the problem. But, but I think you have to go through that, Eric. I think you ha everybody has to go through that before you realize that you want to have a focus. You're not, you, that's part of the evolution of collecting. Gold. That's part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, Aziza, exactly. yeah. where are you on your journey? Are you accumulating? Is there a focus? What? I'm, I'm in the process of trying to figure out what my focus is. I'm in the process of trying to figure yeah. out what my focus is. I'm trying is. to I'm... learn what I want to focus on because I cannot keep accumulating. No, but uh, especially when you're new to fountain pens, you have to do a certain amount of accumulation you just do. so you get your hands on different pens so yeah. that you can eventually figure out what you want to focus on. You need to learn what you like and what you don't like and what you do want to continue to focus on. So. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't <laughs> like about it. <laughs> all right, Sarge, how about a list of all the U.S. pen shows that you attend? I can probably. Okay. I thought you, I thought you were going to say, "How about a list of every pen you own?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I we do. Um, LA and DC are a given, and we don't miss those, and we haven't missed them for many years. But I think now recently we've added Chicago to that because it's a, a good time of the year in terms of us being able to go, and also meeting up with lots of people who don't go to other shows that I see in Chicago only. And but we have also done uh, the Ohio show, and in the past New York, um, the the late lamented New York show, which we used to love because it was friends of ours who organised it, uh, the Zuckers, and also New York is a great city. Uh, so we used to tag on a nice vacation with the pen show. But so but really, I think those are my three. Yeah. You've not considered the Long Island pen show, which is apparently close to New York. Yeah, we've once again. It's almost straight after LA. I mean, we can't do that much travel. Oh, that's true. It's, 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 it's it, we need to kind of also spread them out during the during the year. Okay, so. so you're going to be in Chicago this year. Yes, and then you'll be in DC DC this year. Yeah, we will. And, and then uh, February of 2014, you will be back in Los Angeles taking yeah, my and, money. <laughs> and we <laughs> may we we'll before we, then. We may do Ohio. I may I'm. Um, Think, trying to work something out where we can do Ohio, then fly straight to Madrid. It's, oh, I could do that. I could do that. I'll, I'll go to Ohio if it includes a trip to Madrid right afterwards. So I'm trying to work something out. They're, they're you know, one weekend apart. It's just awkward for us, but I'd love to. I, the Ohio show when we went, we had a great time, and uh, it's for vintage. It is probably getting to be the best show. Fantastic. Here's here's a question that's going to be, I hope, very interesting uh, for a man who has been in love with fountain pens for so long and has a history of accumulation and then focus. 
what is the next pen you're looking for <laughs> to add to your collection that you've never owned before? Tough one. I thought about this, and I think it would have to be um, if what I save up for now are probably the custom pens. So it's something from probably Paul Rossi. We talked this year in LA. Uh, I spotted some material that American Art Plastics are doing, and I'm going to get him to make me a pen. Similar to, like, this is the, the Rossi, which I think you've seen, the Rossi Grey, made by yes. Brian, mm -hmm. with Paul's overlay. I'm going to try and do one in a platinum, um, the platinum Arco type celluloid, which David Nishimura is currently curing. I've seen some some batches which weren't I mean, some of the batches that are on the way so maybe in Chicago I'll all right so material. when Sarge wants a new pen he commissions someone to cure celluloid is that what I'm hearing no 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 <laughs> I, I picked some celluloid so I mean but there is some that's being cured right now as I understand it when I was, the last that I saw in LA there's some other stuff coming through with which has got sort of color that I want all right, that's probably the best answer I could have gotten. Something custom, because what else would there be that you've never owned before? Yeah, I mean, there's very, there's a lot. I mean, I'm still for my collection. I mean, I collect early Schaefer's. So, if I, I mean, at the moment, I've got a couple to show. I mean, the, the overlays I like, and there's a, you know, these are very rare. Um, Wait a minute, are you calling that a Schaefer? That is a Schaefer filigree overlay from around 1918, 1919. Wow, they're rare. And I've never seen a Schaefer like that before. I would yeah. never have guessed it to be a Schaefer. You wouldn't. And there's one in silver. Oh, I'll take the silver. Yeah, but, the, I um, you want the gold one, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, these came in, um, you know, different patterns and stuff. So if I see these and anything that, um, that like that that I can add to my yes. collection, I will obviously. But you, you have those already, so it wouldn't have been some. It wouldn't be something. Yeah, it wasn't something I didn't know. So yeah. Custom is what you need for. Now, uh, apparently, you have some some pens at the at the ready there that you could share with yeah. us. I know in the green room before the show, you showed us a demonstrator that I was amazed at. Yeah, I'm going to. Show, I wanted to. This once again. This is an early Schaefer. I know it looks like a no nonsense, but it's not. <laughs> this is a, a a Schaefer flat top from around. 1921, 22, maybe a little bit later, um, and of course, you know, sh uh, pen companies wanted to demonstrate how you know the features of their pen, and before um, you had your transparent plastics, what they used to do, they used to cut out from. You can see little portholes along the side right, of that. They pen. put portholes in it. Yeah, so you could see how the lever worked. So you basically, I mean, I don't know how easy it is, but you could. Um, the, other, the sack is dried up in here, but. You could pull the lever and show the pressure bar mechanism. I see. So you get little yeah. little windows into the yeah. inner workings. And the other two windows in the cap, one shows the way the clip is attached to the top. Oops, I'll hold it up. Okay. And one shows how the the cap, uh, the inner cap, would you know sort of um, forms the seal. That's and these amazing. Are features, so, yeah. This is like a. a, a, a if I understood correctly, this is a pre-clear plastic demonstrator. Where they actually Correct. just had to make windows in the pen. Yeah, they cut out. And, and all the companies did it. They've got Parkers and you've got Then Water why have I never seen one of these before? Because you're always looking for Mont Blancs and stuff <laughs> no, like that. No, I'm not. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a Caveco safety. There you go. You're distracted by that one mission. But, uh, <laughs> so I thought that would be interesting because demonstrators, is, you know, a lot of people collect demonstrators these days and they're great pens. And That's all amazing. The, the companies are made. No, I have a few pens I could yeah. probably do that with if I had a drill. It would be tough. <laughs> yeah, but you could try. I have Brian Gray do it for me here. I'll yeah, send you. I did have a green in one in the green jade in that which I sold, which I regret now. I thought I don't need two of them, but I wish I'd kept the green because it was it was actually quite nice. Uh, but hey, that could be my next pen. That could be your next pen. What else you got? Uh, the other pen I bought along, I think, um, to show was what I focus on now are uh, Schaefer balances. That is my. Okay. And this is uh, probably the rarest of the balances, which is a rose glow oversize. I don't know sure whether you can see the color in here. It's a streamlined. I see a then. little, a little. Actually, I see a little pink, don't I? Yeah, it's pink. <laughs> and then um, it's, but it is the. They made very few in the large size. So this is kind of probably the best balance I have in my collection in terms of collectability and rarity. It's probably the best looking balance I've ever seen. Well, it's, and also, I mean, what I thought. Just just to show you, I, I don't know how well, these are the way I store them. So they came in a multitude of colors and <laughs> oversizes. And these are my these are my collection is stored in several of these boxes plus various other things. All right. So, Does everybody now understand why we call him the one-man pen show? <laughs> yeah, man. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a great name. I, I just saw the TM next to it. I don't know whether you, you've actually well, applied for that. Legally, no. But <laughs> no. That's an inside joke. Great. Yeah. Uh, Aziza, any questions coming from the chat room? Do you have any questions? Aziza was gone. Now she's back. Aziza, hello. How are you? We can't hear oh. you. Oh, sorry. I'm no, back. No, sorry can. about that. We didn't know you were gone because your picture stayed there. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> In fact, it's still there. We have my, two of My Firefox just decided it just wanted to crash randomly. So. I just asked you if there were any questions for Sarge in the chat, and now I'm going to ask Stephen, too. Do you have any questions for there Sarge? Were, there were two questions. All right, go for um, it. The first one, um, how do I know if a pen is in good writing condition unless the seller lets me write with it? Well, for a vintage one, they should let you write with it. <laughs> now, you don't mean fill it. Yeah, filling is one thing. I mean, some pen, I mean, I let people, if it's a vintage pen that isn't mint uninked, you know, I'm happy for people to, to fill it uh, at a show and try it. Um, but if it's something that's you know, new old stock, then dipping is probably, is, and if it's limited editions, I don't even let them dip, you know, they take the chance, you know. But if it's a, a vintage pen, then I think if you're at a pen show, you should, I mean, there's no reason if it's been inked before, because let's face it, most of them, if they're vintage, they would have had to have their filling systems restored. So they would have been tested after that. So what's the harm? And it's just a bit of extra flushing out for me if they don't decide to buy it. But okay. Right, know, and personally, the, me, uh, I will, if I'm seriously considering a purchase, that's when I'll ask if I can dip it. Yeah. Uh, if I'm just being a looky-loo and, you know, yeah. kicking tires, then I won't ask to dip it. But if I'm actually considering it, unless the pen is on Sarge's table, and I'll say, here's my money, take my money, take my money. <laughs> yeah. If I remember rightly, Kerry, I'll let you take the pen and you come back and say, here's my money. So you yes, off, I, you, I walk around. You normally go and off and do I, I don't actually ink them. I just walk around and I, I brag about it. Look, look what I got. Look what I got. And if I get enough eyebrows raised, I'll go back and give them my money. <laughs> As is, you said there was another question. The other one, um, what do you think the best replacement ink for Pendant Sapphire is at this time? Waterman, Florida, blue. No. no it's a different <laughs> shade. I, I don't. I mean, there's another one that was very close. It was called DC... Super Show Blue, okay, which is made by um, the. I'm going to say Noodler. Private Reserve. It's private private reserve, reserve. Yes. Reserve. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure whether that's still in there. I have a couple of bottles of that. That's very. That's close. The other one I think is Noodler's Ottoman Azure is close as well. But I, I mean, I think of some of the Noodler's. I've had some bad experiences with them, so I, I tend not to use them in my best pens because they. I think with Noodler's, if you can do a fill, make sure. You flush it out um, once you want to put it away. Don't leave it in there too long. I think the, the saturation is too much. Um, I've got no evidence of any damage, but it just took a long time to flush afterwards, which is a pain. Okay. That's a good question. How, how long should you leave ink in a pen? Well, if it's in my rotation, which I call, I have about a dozen pens that sit in a tray on my desk, like this even. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> These aren't in rotation. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have a little tray like this on the corner of my desk, and I and that's what the pens I don't carry with me. Once I've, um, you know, I generally I, I use them every day. I come home from work, I'll have a little doodle or write a card or a note to somebody. And um, but I admit it, we all just doodle with our pens. Yeah, mostly. exactly. We so, sit down at our desk because I got to say, I got a tray too, right over there. That's full <laughs> of inked pens that I don't have. You know, right now I am writing a lot of letters because of Inko Rimo replies. Yeah. But when I don't have letters to write, I will. Just doodle. Yeah, Each I, it's fun. Goes through fun. a doodle. Yeah, it's fun. So then, I mean, I, but, but once I finish with it, I think, okay, either it's going to go back in my collection or it's going to go into the inventory drawers. Then I will flush them. I will not leave them inked for for days and days and days because I think then, you know, they will dry out and uh, it's a lot harder, you know, it's, uh, to actually get them flushed out properly, especially vintage pens because. Quite often we, you know, we, we I've knocked out the, the the nib and feed and given it a proper cleaning in an ultrasonic. So one inking that's fine. Then you can flush it and put it away. But if you let the ink dry back up inside of them of those pens, and you've also got sacks, I think you then you know things are going to get more perished. So I I'm pretty good at maintaining them. Plus I enjoy flushing pens and stuff as well. You it's enjoy just, flushing pens? Yeah, it's part of the kind of whole thing, <laughs> isn't it? You know, getting yes, yeah, yeah. it is part of it, but uh, yeah. Sorry, do you use any pen flushing solvents, or do you just use water? Just dish, dish, uh, just normal dishwasher soap, you know, okay. that kind of stuff. Just a little bit of diluted, 
Nah, you don't have to get any of these fancy solvent. I suppose if you're into calligraphy and stuff, then I guess that's a bit more. Right. Then right. you can use this Kuinor and. Okay. I use this Amadex um, uh, ink uh, remover for my hands quite a lot. Right. So. Oh, you're an Amadex. Amadex. Yeah, well, this stuff, which is, I think is good, advertising right. for whoever. But <laughs> there you go. They better send us a check now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to keep Aziza around, yeah. Go get the money, Aziza. Go get it. Doc Brown. Yes. Any questions for Sarge? No, this was very enjoyable, but I think all of my questions have been answered. So I, I don't I have a question for you. For me? Yes. Oh, I think I left the kettle on the. <laughs> okay. How many fountain pens do you have right now? Um, Approximately. Well, that's. Eight, two, one, it, it, it must be pushing 150, but that's... that's oh, really, I thought uh, you surpassed 200, you didn't? I don't think so, but I, 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 I've, I've reached the point where counting them just gets depressing. <laughs> so I, I, just, I just, you know, I, I have a rough estimate, it's about 150, and that's, that's all that's doing. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, see, I thought you were going to go over 200. That's why I asked the question so fine. He's probably Not got yet. more than 200. I'm sure he has. Yeah, he's lying, isn't he? Sarge, yeah. what is the question that we forgot to ask? Something that you knew we were going to ask, but now we haven't. Um, you got me there, Eric. Okay. That means we asked everything. You did. I mean, I, you know. <laughs> well, personally, I can't wait to see you again. Um, <laughs> Uh, Are I you coming know. to Chicago? I, I keep saying I'm not coming to Chicago, but I keep. I, yesterday I was asked that three times, and three right. times in a day is like a sign. Maybe I should go to Chicago. I don't know. You should go. Yeah, you can probably uh, get a relatively cheap flight, and the hotel's not too bad there. So, no, like, it's, it's a fun show. And you're yeah. there, and yeah, you know, you, you go to pen shows for the people mostly. Uh, you, you get to see people that you like and love face to face, and it's different uh, than via email. It's much different. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a social thing more than anything. So I don't know. Uh, Chicago is absolutely not off the table because of course it isn't in the past yet. So uh, anything's possible. If I don't see you in sure. Chicago, I will most likely see you in, in DC. Um, and what about Mr. Doc, Dr. Brown? DC this year, sir? Well, I, I, I'd love to. The problem is I have to round up my dissertation around that time. So oh, it's, man. it's, uh, I think if you bring it with you, we can all do it. We can <laughs> all, we can all write a sentence and now we're done. That sounds like a brain idea. It will be the yeah. most unique dissertation ever written. It will be yeah. unique and it will be colorful. There will be a lot of different inks in yeah. there. Um, yeah, so I don't know. If there, if there is time, I will definitely be there. It was fun last it's, year. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was yeah. great fun. I, I, I it was a blast. It, it was yeah. a blast. Aziz is going to the DC Pen Show this year. Oh, wow. Oh, well, great. <laughs> she, she. I'll go if Stephen goes. Oh, okay. They're both okay. going. Cool. <laughs> Speaking of Stephen, Stephen, why don't can you run through the headlines that hit FP Geek's website this week? I can, I can, but maybe I don't feel like it. Yeah, let me go. Uh, here we go. Okay, so we have a couple of things on the website. We have a very nice video, which shows you the making of a Genji, a Urushi fountain pen, which I found hypnotizing and, and, and very, very interesting to watch, so check it out. Um, there was an article by, I don't know, someone called Dan Smith. Uh, Smith. He, I've heard of him. Yes, yeah, so have I. Uh, he, uh, he wrote an article which was a response to someone who wrote an article on why he does not use fountain pens. Clearly that article was not published on FB Geeks, uh, but then Dan's article, Why I Use Fountain Pens, has been published there. So I, I thought it was an interesting read. It's a very then popular we, read, yeah. It's very interesting. A lot of people found it, found it fascinating, I think. And then we have uh, a write-up and pictures of the Long Island Pen Show. So if you could not be there, then you can at least read the article and check out some pictures. And I believe that was submitted by Ed Jelly. Yes, I believe so, too. So that's, uh, that's good. Uh, and then we have, I don't know exactly why that's good, but it's, it, it was a, <laughs> there, there, were, there were nice pictures. Um, uh, and now it sounds like the text was not good. The text was nice, too. The pictures were nice. Thank you, Ed. Shall right. I continue for you, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I can do it. And uh, then we had Ask the Professor, uh, which was a very special episode that, that featured a crustacean. Um, then we, we uh, had... A strange hybrid accent. Uh, you know, with a, a very... Uh, yes. 
cross between English and Australian. I don't yes, sure I, I, I noticed too. I, you know what? <laughs> few, few people know that Lord Windermere actually uh, did some mining in Australia. So I, I, I'm not with those claws. It's fairly easy, you see. So I yeah, guess okay. that's kind of where the whole thing uh, started. And they can but, swim there, can't they? They can swim there. And swim yeah, there. He, he just swam there. He ends yeah. up there. He starts mining. It's just typical yeah. windy day. Um, <laughs> let me see. Then we have the Encyclopedia. Uh, uh, this was an entry on an extremely, extremely vibrant and bright orange called Diamine Pumpkin. Uh, we we had the, uh, the 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 announcement of the Pelican Twist fountain pen. I want uh, one. Also very colorful. You want one? I, I I think I want one. I'm absolutely certain Aziza wants one. Yeah. Um, See, I'm I'm accumulating. I have to have that pen. Yeah. It's it's a funny pen. Uh, it's slightly disturbing that I guess it was made for children and we all want one, but it's it's uh, it's still interesting that, that we do. Um, then we have the uh, uh, Conklin's limited edition Crescent demonstrators, which look very interesting. Um, so you can check those out. We have the awesome review of the Omas Ogiva Vision limited edition fountain pen written by oh, again the Dan Smith guy. Dan Smith uh, and Aziza. Aziza, Aziza did exactly. an awesome review. Yeah, and she did an awesome because she's job. Awesome. Uh, yes. I'm uh, awesome. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm awesome. <laughs> That's fairly obvious. Well, you are. Then we had a review also by Aziza. I think it's, it was it's indeed crazy uh, of the Mont Blanc greeting cards and envelopes, uh, and uh, finally. Uh, some guy called Sarge, so I can't really pronounce his name, but Sarge, Sarge something, I think it was Sarge or something, uh, shows us his daily carry pens. Which and was that a was a post article. that you just, that, that will make you drool, cry, <laughs> shout in frustration, uh, tear your hair out, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. Covet, yes, Aziza hit, it on the, hit the nail on the head, it covet. 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 All right, Stephen, since you're here in the spotlight, how about recent acquisitions? Do you have anything new this week? Uh, yes, I have two things. Uh, one is a uh, Twisby Diamond 580. Of course, that was something that I had to get. Uh, I, I was very interested to see the new incarnation. So, so you have I, a Twisby Diamond 580. What what nib did you get? I got a 1.5 millimeter italic, uh, which is a nice nib, uh, fairly juicy. I would say it's it's uh, um, lovely, nice wide lines, and yet I found it was. Um, not so wide that it cannot be used for daily writing. Uh, and so if you hold uh, that pen up again, um, say something so we get you full, full screen. Uh. <laughs> Is that an Ackerman ink you have in there? It is indeed. All it right. Is, uh, I thought I recognized that ink. Ackerman Treve Turquoise, a nice turquoise. Uh, it's just a turquoise, but uh, one that I really love. Nice shading, good flow. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, and then... Phil and Matthew, this is very interesting. This is a father-son combination I correspond with. Uh, they're from Ireland, and I write to both the father and the son, and they both write back to me. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, bit of correspondence. Uh, they sent me a, um, uh, a sample of an ink. Uh, this is a Rohr und Kina ink, and it's called Salix, or Sali, or I'm not exactly sure how I should pronounce it. And Sarge has the full bottle. Sarge has a bottle of this. And I'll try to make a big screen. There we go. And it's an it's an iron gall ink, so that's quite special. And according to uh, the, the kind people who sent me this, for which of course I thank them, uh, it, it wasn't even extremely difficult to clean up pens or something. So this is going to make it into an encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. I I, I thought I smelled that on the horizon. Very yeah. good, very good. A Twisby Diamond 580 and an ink sample that will go into Encyclopedia Aziza. Exactly. Yes. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know if we want to hear from you because last week it was a Nakaya and a Conway Stewart. I can't imagine what it will be yeah. this year. This year, this week. Well, I can't top it, but it's still pretty awesome. All right, so let's go for it. I also have a 580. A Twisby 580? Yes, it arrived well, yesterday. Love 580. What kind of nib is it? <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I also got the 1.5 stuff. No way, really? Yes, because you also have I that Ackerman ink in it. <laughs> no, it is uh, <laughs> Kujaku. Stop interrupting you. You go ahead and talk. It's Kujaku, and it's and it's like Stephen said, it's juicy and it's just delicious. I love it. Uh, it's fantastic. So that is what this is one pen. 
that I got. And I actually ordered it during the Anderson Penn podcast last week, and it was funny because <laughs> it happened by the end of the podcast because that's what... It's mind control, okay? And then I got a Faber-Castell Ambition with a pearwood barrel. Wow. Wow. In a fine nib because I thought it would be interesting. And it is currently inked with Mont Blas Carlo Collodi ink because it actually matches the barrel, which is kind of neat. And last but not least, a Levenger True Rider Kyoto with a broad nib inked with Noodler's Navy because it's got like blue in it and I thought it would be kind of matching. That's nice. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. Cool. Yeah. Mm. That's nice very trio. nice. Very nice. nice the Faber Castell uh, was a. Uh, did I know about that? No, I thought it would surprise you. Because it's not like we don't talk every day. I hadn't yeah. heard about that pen. I wanted to surprise you with it. Well, surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, I, I got a new pen this week, too. Can anybody 580. 580. 580. Oh, it's a Twizzle 580. <laughs> Guess what nib I got? I can't a 1.5 millimeter stub. 1.5 millimeter stub. Boom. Mine, Welcome however, to the club. is not inked yet. I will not be inking mine if I can stand it. I, you know, seeing all these 580s inked, it makes me really want to ink this pen. But I'm, I'm going to Mexico on Tuesday. I will be gone for two weeks, just so everybody knows that ahead of time. And I'm taking the Twisby family with me, including this 580. And I thought I would just ink it up while I'm because it, otherwise I'll have to clean it before I get on the plane. So that's still debatable. Yeah, that's. I did also get something that is not a fountain pen, but. But I hope it will inspire envy in every single one of you. I got as a pair long of shoes. it's not a ballpoint, it's not a ballpoint. You may be safe. I got okay. a pair of shoes, but they're not just any shoes. They are fountain pen geek shoes. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is positively awesome. Cool. <laughs> so on the right shoe, it says, of course, indulge in the madness, and and on the back of the shoes, there's a harlequin pattern at. I don't know. I asked for gray and gold, but uh, you know, uh, Michael pink. Ward did these, and he said every time he put the gold on the shoe, it turned to pink. Um, so we're not sure how that happened, but and I do have some more pictures just because you probably want to see the back of the shoes because I think the back of the shoes are rather cool, uh, and I should describe them. There's a they're a pair of Vans, uh, and they have been uh, custom painted by Michael Ward. They're called Swaves. He has customswaves.com. Uh, I ordered these at the LA Pen Show, and they are now ready. Um, I, I don't have them in my possession just yet, but uh, I did get you pictures. You're wearing a tuxedo and this, those these, shoes at the show. These are my new show. tuxedo shoes, and that is in cool. this picture That's... you can see the geek crown is on the other shoe, the left shoe. Oh, awesome. yeah, cool. And well, so, I can't wait to see those on your feet. I Please. can't wait to see those on my feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's so that's right. what I got. I got a 580 and a pair of shoes. And oh, I, um, that's it's the first time that anybody has said I got a pair of shoes in re recent acquisitions. Sarge, mm -hmm. have you got anything new this week? Well, uh, yeah. I, well, I got a. Um, I couldn't be left out, so I got a Pelican. All oh, right. I think we M should all hold up. <laughs> we should all hold up our Pelican M800 Tortoise Shell Brown. Look how gorgeous mine is. Oh. Yours. <laughs> yours is like the Emperor's new clothes. <laughs> yeah. And I also. Uh, uh, Sarge, before you move on, what nib did you get in that? Uh, I have a broad nib in mine. I have a broad nib. I think Stephen yeah. got like a double or a triple broad or something like that. Triple broad. Triple broad, okay. Yummy. Which is uh, just, actually, it's just, just marked freaking broad on the nib. It's just, <laughs> just FB for uh, yeah. FB. And I also got uh, at the Eastern Pen Show last week a Mont Blanc. Uh, it's, a, it's the 146 Le Grand. But it's got this. It's called the black and white. It has a steel cap. I don't know if you can see with the alternating lines. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. very nice. I had to have it when I saw it. And um, bring that to I Chicago. I will. I haven't inked it yet, but I because it has a medium nib. So I've written with plenty of medium. So as I just was saying to you before the show, Eric, I'm going to try and get a transplant for that nib and get a something a bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. make it irresistible. Why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so those are my two. And plus, I've got other pens for my inventory, but these are these are kind of for myself at the moment. So. All right. How about uh, we revisit the obscure word? Oh yes. Hold that Boostrof back up. Boostrophedon. 
Boustrophedon, and uh, Doc Brown seems to think it has something to do with twisting while you write, so it's some sort of It is, it script. is indeed. The actual, uh, it's, the, it's the writing of alternate lines in opposite directions, as from left to right and from right to left. And it's uh, analogous with uh, when you're plowing your field. So, um, you know, oh, you would take okay. it up yes. one way and then you would write. And you actually do write backwards going the other way. It's, it was used by mm -hmm. the ancient Greeks and also the Egyptians in some of their hieroglyphics. And I didn't Use know it in about a it until I was... I can't. But oh, I suppose, okay. I mean, I, I guess, you know, you, you, you could have a, an adjective which would be uh, boustrophedonic. And uh, you could say he wrote in a boustrophedonic fashion. Fashion. I knew fashion was coming out. All right. A very obscure word. You nice. fooled us all. Good for you. Congratulations. You can come back now. Thank you. And, and you only have to pay that fee the first time, so you never have to pay that fee. I do want to I announce that... I enjoyed looking that it up, actually. Yeah. Did it take you a long time to find a word? It did, actually. Yeah. Well, I wanted to have ones that related to writing. I mean, there were loads of obscure words. But I mean. Right, but something it yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be related to writing or anything, but it's it seems more fun though the habit. Right, people are yeah. doing that. I want to announce that next Saturday, FPTV there will be no FPTV next Saturday. <gasps> next Saturday and Sunday is Easter weekend, and everybody is taking the weekend off. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Although you know Stephen Brown might put himself on camera and give us a show. Who knows <laughs> where he is? Uh, anything from the chat room that we need to address? Everyone is sad that we're not going to be here next week. Oh. But well, they can just picture us. <laughs> Never mind. I take it back. They, oh, just forget it. <laughs> just don't go there again, Aziza. Yeah, please. just forget it. Yeah. Never mind. Aziza, why don't you remind everybody how they can contact us? <laughs> okay. And this time, I, I, okay. Let's just. Go. And it has to be quick. Yes. Okay. On the web, fpgeeks.com. Email podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can phone at 415 685 geek, which is 4335. Twitter.com slash fpgeeks, Facebook.com slash fpgeeks. There's the forum, which is fpgeeks.com slash forum. There is the mailing address, which is Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 728, Ankeny, Iowa, 50021. Very good, Aziza, very good. Um, nothing in the chat room that we need to address. Sarge, anything that you have for us that we have not mentioned? No, it's been a pleasure. It has uh, been an honor much, to everyone. have you with us. Yeah, I, I, I do hope you'll come back again soon and visit with us. That would be great, yes, absolutely. Stephen Brown, any words of wisdom, or do you just want to sign us off, as you usually do? Uh, this was pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty nice. Is that a wise uh, expression? All right, I'll just throw it to you then. You can give us your usual trademarked goodbye. Ah, yes. Well, uh, that's all let's do it. So we hope this was useful, and um, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, listeners. Bye.